Morning guys, Scotty here. It is the next day. Uh, looking at the video that I shot yesterday, it became obvious very quickly that video is going to be too long, so this is obviously part two. Um, today I'm setting up to make the top bars. Uh, I've got one of my pine boards here. It's a 12-foot board, and I wrote that down. I'm going to try and keep track. Um, I was playing real careful here with a pencil. Looks like even with the thickness of my saw blade, I should be able to get 10 out of here, although these knots, and this has got a split back here, going to cause me some grief. So I'm going to get rid of this. Close up, camera's running. I'm going to get rid of that knot there. These two knots are still going to cause me some grief. And then I'm going to jump down here. Then i got a clear piece, blah, blah, blah. Um, I want 40 for this little project. Um, you know, if I was in big production, I'd probably get a half a dozen boards and I would cut the whole works, blah, blah, blah. I think I'm going to end up cutting five sections. That will give me a few extra, uh, maybe six. We'll see how these knots work out. Um, I've got a little cutting block, as I always do. Put the blade down, put this in, mark it, cut it. A couple test cuts. Um, this dimension is very important. Um, all the dimensions, I guess, are important, but this one's really important. Um, I bought some frames from somebody a few years back, put them together, and then I realized that the top bar was just a hair long. And it's a real pain in the arse. A um, little bit of propolis on them, and holy hell, they get tight. Um, I have a little wooden block with a piece of, the, I think it's about 40 grit sandpaper that I can just, when I'm out in the bee yard, I can work them out there to try and make them fit a little bit better. So yeah, I made a, a few test cuts and made for sure. And of course, this is not, it's not sponsored, but this is my Man Lake test one. So, going to make some noise, going to make some sawdust. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of that knot, and then I'm going to cut at least five sections, but possibly six. So let's make some noise. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, it's the only way to do it. You have to make noise. <laughs> So yeah, these two knots are going to be a problem, but I might get one there. I might get two here, probably get four there. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to try that. i got five pieces. Um, I can always make more if I need to. Uh, I think I'm going to try and save this piece to make the bottom bars. Maybe I can get them 40 out of the one 12-foot board. Uh, okay, let me rearrange cameras. Bring it back in a second. Okay, guys, next step is to plane these pieces down to 5 8 as that's the thickness of our top bar. Um, I already made a test cut. I'll have to do this in a couple cuts, but... Uh, a whole lot to this. Make some noise, make some shavings, or chicken bedding. <laughs> yeah. All right, now it's over to the table saw. Let me change these cameras again. Next, I want to create this little bevel that's on the underside of the top bar. To do this, I've set the blade over, uh, what did I put it at? I got this at five degrees. I've tried four, but five seems to be better. Um, and then use my template to set the height of the blade. Of course, I had to put the fence on the opposite side. Um, that seems to work just fine. And then I'm gonna run the whole board through so as to make that bevel on all, potentially all 10 top bars at the same time. Turn the dust collector on, put the headphones on, once again, sawdust and noise. One little tip there that should be obvious, you run this through this way, you make sure you rotate it this way and make your second cut so that 
both cuts end up on the same time. It would be real bad if you did that way and then went that way. <laughs> Not that I've made that mistake. Okay, um, next step, back to my brand new uh, table saw with the dado blade. Give me a minute. All right, guys, so the next step, at uh, least in the way I'm doing it. I'm not saying this is the best way. <laughs> this is just the way that I'm doing it. Um, so I've taken and made that, where's the close-up camera? I've made this little angled cut on the, the board that I'm going to make all my top bars out of. Now I'm going to run this through the uh, saw with the dado blade. I'm taking a 3 8 cut out of there. Um, and that's going to create this cut, the bottom one, not these two side ones. It's creating this bottom one. And by doing this way, I save a little bit of time because I'm going to do, essentially, I'm going to do 10 at the same time. There is a problem, and of course, there's a trick to it. Um, <sighs> so, it's, it's this one right here that I'm creating right now. This cut is a different depth than these two cuts, which I have to make later. Those two cuts allow the sidebar to go in, all right? The, the depth here is determined by this cut, but you can't test this cut on the main board until you've made those cuts. Of course, you can't make those two cuts until you rip the things into pieces. So, my solution to this has been, um, I have a few pieces, but a couple more left yet, um, from the last batch I made. Well, basically, all I'm looking for is a piece, it's essentially a top bar that I didn't finish, all right? So then I can come around over here and I can play around. I, I make a few cuts. Essentially, what I want to do is get the two side cuts so that I can put the top bar in, and then what I'm doing, whoops, then what I'm doing is I'm actually adjusting the dado blade to get the depth of this cut. These two are only put in here so that I can test this, and actually this one, you can, hopefully you can hear and see that. Those two right now are actually the same as that one, and it's too sloppy, but that's okay. I was only after that one. Um, so that I can cut the main board. Then after I rip it to pieces, then I will come back here and I will readjust that one. You see, I've got this end marked good to get that. And of course, this is my manly test one. And this is one of the ones I made myself. And actually, the ones I made myself <laughs> fits nicer. That's beautiful there. Um, this fits nicer than the Man Lake one. Which, hurts, of course, is what I'm after because these are mine. So, a lot of blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. But it is tricky. Um... The saw should be set up now, I'm going to get rid of this, to take and make the cuts on this. It's a lot of fiddling about, but it does save a lot of time in the long run. Okay, once again, make some sawdust, make some noise. course when you get it set just right that little wedge shaped piece comes off and these boards have a little wee bit of a cup to them or just to them so I'm putting it through I'm trying to I'm trying to flatten it as I go through there all right rearrange the cameras again go back to the table saw and now it's time to rip these into pieces which is where these came from but of course this one you know it had a knot so I called it but yeah I, I realized when I was doing the last batch that having a few of these would be awfully handy and into it and I called these ones Taking all my little jigs and templates and I'm throwing them all in a box and I'll throw these in there with them for the next time. Okay, let me change the cameras. All right, this is really straightforward, guys. Just uh, took the tilt out of the blade. I used my test piece to set the fence. I've actually already taken a test cut and then uh, 
I just put the two pieces together and feel them and I'm actually first try. <laughs> it doesn't happen too often. Um, dust collector, saw, sawdust and noise. It's all about sawdust and noise, guys. All right, so I've, I've definitely got a couple, you know, wherever the knots were. Um, I'm going to call those, but like I say, I can hang on to these. I'll put them with my uh, collection. They're the right width, so these will make it very easy for me to, to set my uh, dado blade for the next time. Let me count them, see if i got enough, because I, if I have to make more, I want to do it before I adjust that saw. So give me a second. All right, yeah, I'm good. I got 43 good ones. I got four that are kind of questionable. I don't think I'll use them. And then, of course, that one broke. So, um, enough for that. Uh, bottom bar. Uh, lunchtime, then bottom bars. See you in a bit. Well, clearly, I was getting hungry, guys. <laughs> I still got a couple more cuts to make on these top bars. Um, so, now I have to lower the height of the dado blade to make these two, where's my close-up camera? To make these two side cuts to, uh, to fit this. So, I grab my test one, and I'm setting it on there, and it's just, it isn't a heck of a lot. You know, maybe a guy could fart around and get it so that the one cut did both, but anyway, not a big deal. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, <clears throat> got a couple of these ones that have the, the knots that aren't going to be very good. I'm going to use them to make a couple test cuts, get things where I like it, and then uh, proceed. Let's make some noise. Man, Lake one fits fine. My own fits fine. Um, I'm happy with this height, which of course was the first, the first uh, pass through the dado, and now I've created the two side ones. I'm actually quite pleased with that. Let me run a couple through, and then uh, I'll double check them. And actually. Um, I did on the other batch. I was running, I was running two through at a time. Um, yeah, we'll see how that works out. Alrighty, that's that. Uh, I did try running four of them through. <laughs> Same thing as last time I tried. Doesn't work so well. Get the close-up camera going here. Need to have this hand holding them tight to the fence, and then these fingers are pressing them down. You got to hold them down. You got to hold them square. 
Two just seems to work better. Uh, all right. Back to the other table saw for what I think should be the last step on the top part. Let me change cameras. All right. Close up camera going here. Um, what I've done now is again use my template one. Um, I've set the height of the blade and I've set the fence to hopefully I've got it in the center. I'm going to take one of my reject pieces and uh, make a quick little test cut here and then adjust the fence and the height of the blade as I see fit. And then, then I got a couple of jigs that I'm going to set up and I'll show you. Got the close up camera going here. So the groove, I just made this one. It's definitely narrower, narrower, that's a hard thing to say, uh, <laughs> than the Man Lake one here. But I have fooled with this one. And the plastic foundation, plastic foundation does go in there. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, I think the depth, Okay, just using the bevel square, T square, whatever you want to call this gizmo. Um, I've bottomed it out in the, the slot that I just made. And when I put it in here, this is rocking. So mine's deeper than that one, and that's actually what I'm after. Okay, now let me, uh, <laughs> once again, I got to change a couple things here. I do need to bring the saw this way. All right. My couple little jiggy things set up here to, to put the groove in the top bar. I take the Man Lake one and I set it in there. Okay, we've decided fence is going to make it centered. I've got this one that I've written on it so I don't lose it. Um, this one's important too, but anyway. Um, this is planed down from three quarters to be just ever so slightly, probably a sixteenth, I'm just feeling it, not a heck of a lot. It's just slightly thicker than the thickness of the top bars. Then this piece, this is critical. This has got a heck of a, a curve to it. I set that right up against the fence. It's now above my, uh, my top bar. Then I just put a clamp here at the back. Okay, oops, keep them snug. Okay. The bottom one is holding the top bar against the fence. And it, you know, I got a little wee tiny bit of play there. Um, because the bottom board is only slightly thicker than the top bar. And because this one's curved, and it has give because I've clamped it here at the back, but it's, it's less than a 16th. I'm just wiggling it where it can come up a little bit, but uh, basically it doesn't want to. Then, Again, I'm going to use this one to run through first. Uh, dust collector and turn this on. Alrighty, guys, just as I started to run these through my little cutting jig here, that camera must have shut off. I went in the house, looked at the footage, and it quit right at the beginning. The footage from the close-up camera, I think, is going to have to do. This may end up getting a little bit choppy. A story of my life, trying to shoot multiple parts, something always goes wrong. Okay, top bars are now complete, um, and I'm not hungry, but they're complete. So now it is time to do the bottom bar, but I'm looking at that clock. Um, got some other stuff to do this afternoon, so <laughs> we're going to call it a day. And uh, the bottom bar is actually the easiest piece to make. Um, yeah, that'll be another time. I'll bring it for you. <laughs> it's going to be a couple seconds. See ya. Alrighty, guys, it is the next day. We're making the bottom bars. We're going to try and get this, uh, this little video finished up here. Um, ma make a cutting block, same as always. I put the saw down. I put the piece I want between here. Find a block of wood, cut it, mark it, blah, blah, blah. Then I... Find a scrap that's too long, cut it, and then I very, very carefully, where's my close-up camera? I'm feeling both ends there. I make for sure it's good. When it's good, 
Again, if I was in some kind of production, I'd make 50 of these, but I'm going to make two. All right, over to the table saw and let's rip this up. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. I just simply use my, my little template piece here to, to set the fence. This feels okay. We're going to make a couple cuts and we're going to test it, of course. Uh, raise the blade up. Um, yeah, not a whole heck of a lot to this. Turn the sawdust collector on, make some noise. All right, it ended up being a little short there. I had to go cut another piece of wood. Um, those two pieces of wood gave me 30. I cut up another one, now I got 45. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm editing this. These ones that had the knots in the center, uh, I would go so far the one way that I flipped the board over. You know, end up doing that. And the third board that I cut, it actually had a, a crack down the center. So I got a little bit of waste. I got these. Uh, I think I'll do the router, the router work. No, I'm not going to. I'm going to do this work. Then I don't have to move the cameras. But let me get set up and we'll rip, we'll rip the groove in these and then we'll go do the rotor work. Give me a minute. Bring you back. Alrighty guys, I think I'm all set up. I used my little T-square thingy here to, uh, to get the, the depth, the depth of the groove in the Man Lake one. And then I used that to set the height of the blade. Then I actually put in the Man Lake one over top of the blade and adjusted the fence. Okay, then I, uh, where's my close-up camera? I ran one of my pieces in just a little wee bit. Um, not 100% centered. Pretty damn close though. <laughs> close enough for me. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I put that, the Man Lake one in there, because it's cut the full length. And again, I have a piece of wood here that I plane down to be just slightly um, proud. A little, little over half inch. The... Uh, the bottom bars are half inch. So this one's playing down just to be slightly more. And then I'm using the exact same board that I used when I did the top bar. And I'm putting that over top. Get the close-up camera going there. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And that slides through there. Then bar clamp on here. Whoops, again. That's got to stay tight. Pull that down. And this still slides. Actually, I've got this one even a little bit snugger than the... Uh, then my uh, one I did in the top bar. Again, I take my collection of, of units here. Uh, I'm going to put one through and then I'm going to stop and test it. And then uh, sawdust and noise. You know, if I was a little smarter, I would have put a box there to catch those. But now I've got to pick them up, bring them to the uh, other table saw with the uh, dado blade, and we'll make our little notches on the end. Give me a sec. Alrighty, guys, we're back over at the table saw that I got the dado blade in, and I got the close up camera running. Um, I just clamped a piece of scrap there to the fence, the sacrificial fence, in case I get too close, which I don't think I really have. Then I used my. My, t my template one to, uh, to set the height and play around with it a little wee bit. Then I just took one of the bars I just cut and I made a sample cut, a test cut I guess, and then I checked my, first I checked the Man Lake one, but then I, I checked my own and I'm, whoops, I am very, very happy. It's, it's, it's yeah, I'm pretty good with that. I am going to, uh, I'll make a couple cuts, then I'll, uh, Then I'll recheck them, then I'll run the whole works through. Um, right there. Okay, let me make a couple test cuts and then we'll go to town. All right, that's that. Uh, assembly. Alrighty guys, I got them all assembled and I've put some plastic foundation in them. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. I've got a video on this frame assembly jig thingy. Uh, the video's getting too long, didn't want to waste any time with that. But yeah, they, they went together pretty well. Um, made a couple notes for next time. Um, 
some of the sidebars are probably a strong three eighths, and the notches that I put in the top bar, of course, because the dado blade is pretty accurate, dead on three eighths. Um, I could possibly throw a couple shims in there and widen that out a little bit, which I don't think I'll do. Maybe just be a little bit carefuler and bring that fence a little closer and make the uh, sidebars a shallow 3 8 or whatever. The only other thing, and it wasn't a huge problem, um, the little the grooves that I put the top bar and the bottom bar, the plastic goes in them just fine, although the Man Lake ones are a little wider, and now I see why. It could be better. Uh, the ones that I made for the foundation list, I actually cheated, and I took and put two saw blades together. Um, basically a 3 16 dado blade, right? I felt that was going to be too wide for the plastic. Uh, I may have to think about that a little bit. Um, <laughs> okay, I really don't care about the cost. Honestly, I don't. But I did try and figure a couple things out here. Uh, my time, I've lost my time. I was running around with a little timer, but to be honest with you, the last couple days, I spent more time fooling with that camera. And it is winter here, although I've mentioned earlier, we aren't having much of a winter, but it's still chilly. So I turn the furnace on, warm the shop up, then I gotta turn the furnace off, wait for the fan to stop, I got a fan here, it circulates the air, moving cameras, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure I spent more time fooling with the cameras than I actually did working on these. Um, the wood, that 2x6 I had, I bought that years ago, but I did a quick search online. I would certainly am not gonna go buy them. Uh, my part of the world, that cost $6.78. I only looked at one place online. Possibly I could find a little wee bit cheaper. And I used up a 12 foot board plus a little wee bit. I was saying earlier that stuff cost me about a dollar a foot. So I said $13, added that all together and divided it out. And I came up at 49 cents. Uh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, 49 cents. The other ones I made, the sidebars were all made out of scraps. If I had only taken the $13 for that board, well, then they would have been 32 cents. Pretty cheap. Labor. Labor's got to kick in here. A couple of thoughts on that. I mean, how much do you pay yourself to sit on the couch and watch TV and drink a beer? Um, it's wintertime here. Not a lot for me to do. So on one hand, I say, well, I'm not charging for my time. On the other hand, you say, well, you have to. You got to kind of figure it out. Um, <laughs> I suspect all of the milling that I did probably only took me a couple of hours altogether. Um, but I decided, no, I'll say four hours because I really don't know. Um, and it's certainly more efficient if you do a larger number of them. I have a buddy of mine who's a carpenter and I already put a bug in his ear that I'm looking for a bunch of scrap. Maybe I'll do some kind of a crazy video down the road and I'll, without the camera, I can do a better job of the time. But anyway, I said four hours. Okay, what do you pay yourself? I just picked a number. I said 25 bucks an hour. That's $100 by 40. You know what? It comes up at $2.50. Okay, I got some material. It might have been three bucks, I guess. I went online looking at my dear friend's man, Lake. Uh, and I only spent a couple of minutes. I know they got so many different, different things there. Maybe I didn't get the right one. But anyway, I found one unassembled wood frames, 159.95 US for a hundred of them. Well, I'm in Canada, and right now it's about 40 cents on the dollar. That comes up to 223 dollars Canadian, and we have tax here. Uh, ends up being to about 253 for those frames, um, and that's without the plastic foundation. Plastic foundation is something completely different. Um, and I know I can do that cheaper. I bought a thousand honey frames from Man Lake uh, seven or eight years ago now. I've got an import tax number. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a pain in the ass. Um, Canada Customs, you got to go through brokerage and all this crap. I did it. Wasted half a day doing it. So you got to charge some time in there for your, some money for your time. So are they worth, worth doing? <laughs> for me, they sure as hell are. Um, yeah, I'm not going to charge the labor. Oh, and if I'm going to sell them, though, they're five bucks each. <laughs> Pile of work, you know. Um, it's just good fun. Only making 40 is not very efficient. I did the 200 there a couple weeks ago. That was good fun. Anyway, um, yeah, you have to decide if, if you want to do it. I'm not saying you should. I don't care whether you should. Um, depending on where you are, easy to get them. Where I am, it's not so easy. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the arse. So for me, winter project, good fun. Um, yeah, I'm sure the video is way over what it should be. So I'm going to get the hell out of here. Appreciate your time, guys. Thanks for hanging out in the shed. Um, we'll talk to you later. You guys be good to your bees. Uh, I'm sure it'll be good to you. See you later. Ciao.